How's it going, everybody? I am Donut. This is, of course, a Black Lives Matter, all cops are bastards, and trans rights supporting channel. You better be supporting that shit, too. We are watching Inhuman Season 1, Episode 2. I am extremely excited for this. Uh, what predictions do I have for this episode? Basically, what I gave last episode, the whole Black Bolt family, the whole royal family, is going to be down on Earth, primarily in Hawaii. I think that Black Bolt is probably also going to be on Hawaii. He's just in a different location for some reason. Um, <clears throat> other than that, I don't really have any prediction. It seems like this episode is going to be pretty straightforward with Maximus, I assume, getting the people on his side. And it's going to be kind of slower in establishing more stuff in Adelan with Maximus and the uh, lower uh, end of the cast system. Cut between some high action stuff and some some comedy of the royal family you know well the, i was gonna say some like comedy of them trying to get accustomed to some like stuff that has changed on earth since the long period of time since they've been gone but they keep such a eye on earth that there might there's probably not gonna be anything that they're gonna be like confused about or anything so probably just some action on earth and some slow exposition on um adelan that is my prediction Let's jump into this episode. If you want to get the full length, check it out on the Patreon below for $4 a month. I also didn't look at the name of this episode. Hold on. Okay, this episode is Those Who Would Destroy Us. Very cool. Very cool name. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, again, very comic booky. Everything about this is so much more comic booky than anything else in the MCU we have gotten yet, which I am, I am really liking, but I can also see why it was, you know not reviewed as, as highly, if that is the reason. Again, I enjoyed the first episode so much. I'm really hoping that it does not go downhill from here. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I did this discussion already, and my mic was muted. Well, I did part of this discussion and realized my mic was muted. So, I'm going to try to, like, you know, get through this a little bit faster than I normally do, or kind of meander around in my talk. I really like that this episode set up all the care, or not set up, but played out all of these characters' major defining moments in the comics, I assume, mainly with Medusa and with Karnak, with Medusa losing her hair. Not this episode with Medusa losing her hair, but we really played more into the fact that she lost her hair this episode. Medusa with the hair, Karnak hitting his head, and now his ability is not working exactly as it was intended to. Those feel like the two big things that happened in the comics that they wanted to like do pretty quickly, which I'm I'm glad that we are doing this this quickly so we have the whole show to really like revel in this change to the character and how it's going to change them. And they did such a good job of setting up the characters in episode one that you know it doesn't feel unnatural, doesn't feel like well I kind of barely knew what they were like to begin with because they do. They did such a good job through the visual storytelling, not even telling me, but just through visuals. Such a good job of characterizing these characters in one episode. And now in the second episode, uh, once again, making me feel so much for them. The first episode, I already felt so bad for Medusa. Now this episode, I'm feeling so bad for Karnak. He's laying down, crying, sleeping where he fell down because he's afraid to go any farther. And and, and uh, I don't know if it's as big of a thing in the comics or anything, but I do like that we are you know, changing all of the characters. We have Gorgon having to deal with his fan, one of his family members getting killed, because now we have the reveal that Triton was uh, his cousin, and, you know, they are the three cousins there, Karnak, Gorgon, and Triton, which seems like they're not brothers, so they are, they have different parents. Um, assumingly, everybody is from the same grandparents, but uh, Black Bolt is, well, why, what would they make, why would they make Black Bolt king? Maybe Black Bolt is the Black Bolt seems kind of younger than all of them, but maybe he is older. So maybe he is the first son uh, of, uh, or, or uh, well, no, I guess what I'm saying is, like, their, Black Bolt's parents would have been the first son, and then Black Bolt is the first son, and then, okay. So I guess that's what I'm saying. So the grandparents had first son, then that is uh, Maximus and Black Bolt's parents, then, or assumingly father, uh, then we have three other parents from that grandparent that uh, these three uh, cousins are from. It is very interesting that they're all, none of them are brothers, they're all cousins. I don't know if Triton's going to be a character character in this, or if he's just going to be a sort of like plot character that we are doing stuff because of, or for, and you know, trying to retrieve and stuff like that, but I don't know if he's going to actually be a character character or not. I'm still assuming he's some sort of like fish boy thing. 
uh, and so he's not dead or anything, but uh, who knows when we're going to get him back. Maybe next episode, maybe it's going to be another episode or two. We also have Crystal uh, going through, she feels very, like she is not worthy. I, that's what I'm getting out of her character, that because of her family, because her family went up against the royal family, got killed, and um, a lot of emotion there, a lot of uh, two sides going on because she wants to be a part of the royal family. It's not like she hates being a part of the royal family. So she's being pulled from both sides of, I feel like I am not living up to what my parents wanted, and I feel a little bit ashamed that I am just so easily accustom, uh, getting accustomed to this lifestyle and, and all that. And she's also being pulled from the other side of the royal family of, like, I am not really a part of the royal family, like even more so than Medusa, where Medusa is married to Black Bolt, and Medusa has a very powerful ability, whereas Crystal, uh, she is, her ability does not actually seem that powerful, and she feels, I think, from the first episode, why she sent Lockjaw to all of them first, and then herself, uh, like after everybody else, was, I think, because she feels like she needs to prove herself. She is technically a part of the royal family, but socially does not really seem to be the case. So, I really like that in her character. Um, seems to be trying to prove herself. And even if, you know, she fucked up multiple times and it didn't, you know, go through... I do like that she is a woman of action. She is always taking action. She is always... She's never, like, hesitant as to, like, oh, what should I do? Or, oh, is this the right thing to do? Or, oh, is this a trap even? But she is, like, she's just immediately gonna do this, gonna do this, gonna do this. I really appreciate that. No qualms about her. And speaking of no qualms about her, no pulled punches, Maximus threatening to kill all the genetic council, which... Yeah, I, I believe that he fully would if it came down to it, but it makes sense why he's keeping them alive. Again, they know all this. They they know all about the genetics behind the Inhumans. They know them most, so you want to keep them around, even if they're not on your side, because they are the best for this job. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious as where we're going to go with the Genetic Council. Like, if that's just going to be the last we're kind of done with them, or if they're going to try and... Act, like, if that vision is going to come to uh, fruition, or if it is a avoidable vision. Um, because so far, every time we see Future Sight, there's not an avoidable thing at all. Whatever happens, happens. So, I don't know what to expect here. It could be different, but I think I'm going to assume the Genetic Council is going to try and kill him. Well, I guess they, I guess that could have already happened. Like, it's not, when he says try to kill him, uh, Brunaja, when he says that, that could just mean that was already happening. Like, you know, when they immediately then went to that place, while they were going there, the Silver Robes were planning how to kill him. Planning is still trying, right? So it, it could be that, like, it's already happened. We don't need to see it happen. But it could be more physical if they will try to actually kill him, and then he's going to kill them all in response. But I don't know if they're going to do that, because they... I, I don't know if they would have the will to go up against somebody like that. I think they're going to be too afraid of their own deaths. Aora is the only character so far that I'm not interested in. I gotta say, she seems very generic. She seems very, uh, like a carryover from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s kind of characters. You know, she is the badass, and especially she is the badass woman, but there's not a whole lot else going on besides that. Uh, and to be fair, this show and S.H.I.E.L.D., again, having writers of Lost on them and stuff, very problem with Lost as well. Lost had a lot of badass female characters, but then they didn't really do anything besides that. And it wasn't towards the end of the show where they really realized their mistake of, like, we just kind of introduce a character as badass female character, and then a lot of times it's just so we can kill them off, and, it, you know, that's very problematic in its own ways. Uh, so, Aora, a she, I'm not very interested in her. She is this generic, just badass woman archetype that is not really going anywhere. It, it, I mean, hopefully we go somewhere with it. But right now, it doesn't seem like there's anything interesting or unique about her. Or at least nothing that we have learned so far. Like, even her healing ability is very... Uh, like, even the way she does it. Like, it is actually magical healing, but it is so close to the warrior just being like the... I just center myself and, mm, okay, I'm okay, and, you know, I will fix myself up and now I'm good to go. Like, it is very, very tropey, as opposed to all the other characters, which are very hard to pin down to a thing. Um, and, and I really, I really appreciate that. So I hope, I hope we go in a different direction than, than uh, Aora, I, or 
uh, Aoron. Is it Aoron? How do I pronounce this name? Hold on. Not even close. It was Auron. Auron. <laughs> it wasn't even close to it. But, yeah, um, I, I hope we go a little bit somewhere different with her. Her, her also this episode, now, uh, again, going into the genericness of it, she had the whole, like, grudge aspect going in, the, oh, I want you to kill Black Bolt, I want you to kill Gorgon, uh, and, you know, make sure you capture the rest of them, and then all she does is go to just kill Medusa, that is her main thing. And he's like, oh yeah, you take a team. She's like, ah, oh, I'm the only one who I'll need. And then, of course, no, if you took a team, probably would have actually got her. But yeah, so clearly we're going with the, she is in love with Maximus, and that, that's where we're going. But Maximus is absolutely going to probably betray her and just get her killed. He's probably just going to say, kill her, in a moment where she is held captured, or something like that. Or, what, or like, kill yourself, or, I don't know. But, there's definitely going to be a moment where he betrays her trust and, and she's like what and then she dies that's my guess the the bracelets the communicators we're doing a lot with them i actually really like that they're not just like a little communication plot device thing like we are doing a lot with them they don't really make much sense to me so far but i don't know if that's me or what you know we'll see as it continues i'm not gonna rag on it too much right now but uh you know it seems like crystal is able to Auron drops her thing on purpose to be fair yes but crystal grabs it picks it up just says medusa into it and it goes to medusa's thing like it just starts ringing on medusa's end so uh have they tr like we know that they are trying to find where the royal family went gorgon leaves his open like he opens the communications leaves it open so they can go there to find them uh, which he doesn't. He's just like, no, I'm just gonna go to Medusa. Maybe he's also sent people there, but to be fair, it seems like he told Aron, no, we're not gonna do that. We're instead gonna go to Medusa. So they now know where Medusa is. They fell for a trap, and yeah. But if if she was able to use Aron's uh, uh, cufflink to contact Medusa, shouldn't they just be able to do that in general? Like. Yeah, it, it might ring and everything like that, and maybe that isn't enough to track them, but I guess, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what if, if it can ring, if you can call them and it's going to ring, wouldn't that be enough to track it? But I guess not. Uh, who knows? Who knows how their technology works? It also can, like, you know, become straight and then also, like, fold out a little bit. Uh, doesn't have texting te <laughs> capabilities, apparently. Really seems like they should have had texting capabilities with these by now, considering Black Bolt. But, nonetheless, uh, really, really smart of him this episode, showing, you know, how he is, where he was, and everything. What's going on with Lockjaw, by the way? Why did Lockjaw send Gorgon to where Triton was, but not anybody else to where Triton and Gorgon was, as Crystal said? What was going on with him? Maybe, like, the more he uses his ability, the, like, in quick succession, the more off it gets, maybe? Uh, I, they are, they are all on one island, I believe. Um, I actually didn't check too clearly on when the text was coming up, but I believe they're all on Honolulu. Or, or rather, I believe they're all on Oahu, uh, and around Honolulu. <laughs> And so we got this rock dude, Eldrock, who has a family that is not, like, around, like, not like, you know, they're not living with him, which, like, what is going on with him? Is he all of Atlanta? Doubt it. Is he that whole building? Doubt it. Is he that wall? I guess so. Did he get teleported into the wall and now he's stuck in it like we saw him do with Auron? Or, like, I mean, that wouldn't be the case or they would be able to break him out of it, but... Did they just build the room around him? Like, all right, I guess this is just one of our walls. Like, again, this seems incredibly, insanely fucked up on the royal family's end. This feels very easy to just get him out of the wall or just put the wall on a skateboard or something. Like, come on, you can do something. You can do anything besides just making him be this wall forever. Now... She went to, like, a specific room and everything also, so it's not like he is something where he lives in all the walls and just brings out his face somewhere. It doesn't seem like it's that wall specifically. Don't know what's going on with it, but something's going on with it. <laughs> Uh, got to see more of the... Uh, I really like, by the way, how the MCU handles the police. <laughs> Every time we see the police in the MCU, except for S.H.I.E.L.D., everything but S.H.I.E.L.D., the police are 
about exactly what you would imagine. They are just the most brutal fucking people ever. And I really like the comparison of uh, the police handling almost the exact same situation between two series in the MCU of here we have Black Bolt and we, they are all just using their nightsticks and just beating him on the ground versus Luke Cage where they just see this, this man, this criminal, and just immediately start shooting at him. <laughs> Because, of course, one's white, one's black. I really love that the MCU is very consistent in that. Uh, it, it does make the world feel more realistic and also feel more connected as a universe, which is why S.H.I.E.L.D., again, feels so much more disconnected as a universe. Oh, my God. I, I do, One of my favorite parts of this, <laughs> this episode, I think, was... It was so comedic to me of Maximus uh, talking to Vernasha and being like, so, have you had any more visions lately? No, I haven't. Hmm. What if I do this? <laughs> it was so, it was so comedic. But I do think he's going to use him as some sort of like vision machine or something. Like he is definitely going to be using him for sure. Don't know where we're going with Hallmark Lady. Don't know what the hell we're going. Uh, like she feels like we're setting her up as like a love interest for an inhuman or something. But I don't even know who it would possibly be. <laughs> Really excited to see. This episode was honestly a lot of set. As, like, really entertaining as this episode was, it was very setup based And uh, I'm very excited for next episode. We're probably going to get a lot of fights next episode. And we're probably also going to get a lot of uh, characters meeting up. We're going to get some more big character moments, I assume. Very curious to see what the hell is going to go on Black Bolt next episode. Because he's now in a, in a jail cell. And he could very easily just break out of it. You know, he could just, bah, and break out. But uh, it also seems like he has to have some sort of slightly stronger than human, uh, like, strength. Because it's not even like he's using martial arts or anything. He's just kind of like, he'll just, like, push somebody and they go, like, you know, not, like, flying back like he has super strength. But he has definitely above average strength, which his body would not have. As I guess, like, it's not like it's not inhuman. It's not like cap levels or anything where it's even peak human. But it is not what his body should be able to do especially with the movements that he does where he'll do a very light like you know twist or whatever and the whole person goes like and, and moves with it so he's definitely got something going on it, it's almost certainly just a like weird visual choreography sort of thing and a you know not wanting the actors to get hurt uh sometimes you gotta you know really suspend your disbelief of certain things of like a character like in a sword fight, like, parrying first before they, uh, you know, actually, the other person even actually attacks, because you gotta do it for safety reasons, and in-universe, it doesn't make any sense, but you gotta, you gotta understand it, but this could be an in-universe thing, which is why I want to bring it up, the Inhumans don't necessarily have to be restricted to just one specific kind of power set, uh, even in, like, their visuals a lot, it'll be like, well, I may visually look this way, but my power is this way, and, um, so it's not necessarily that it has to be just his voice. It could be, and considering the voice is a like an outward blast sort of thing, I don't know. There could be something they're doing there. I doubt it, but there could be something. So I wanted to mention it. <laughs> the suit, by the way, does make him look like Kilgrave so much. Like it's blue instead of purple, but it's it's such a deep shade of blue. And the way that he talks, or the, the way that he like moves or moves himself very very straight postured very you know the not talking very often uh with, with Kilgrave because of his ability um and and so it, it feels uh similar here uh looks really good in the suit though look a really cool outfit for him that we got to see him wear very briefly before now he's in a prison outfit he's been wearing just so many outfits I also do love that, you know, he is very aware of how he looks. So he was, you know, in the alley watching everybody go by and he's like, Hawaiian dude, Hawaiian dude, Hawaiian dude, rich white dude. Okay, that's that's me. Like, he knows that, uh, I mean, it's twofold. One, I think he's trying to fit in even more. And two, he himself probably has some, like, you know, he can sense, like, class and he wants to be the, like, top of the, the class here. He wants to, you know, pretend to blend in to be the top of the class here. Even in a disguise, he doesn't want to be any lower than the top. It's a very subtle part of his character, but I really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, the way... Okay, so, there's clearly something going on with 
the royal family and what they know about humans. Medusa knows the most because she's not in the royal family. And then all the royal family seems to be pretty dumb when it comes to Earth. Like, they know about Earth, they know about certain stuff on Earth, but they don't, they probably haven't seen it before. They've never been shown it. It's just been, like, propagandized to them. So, it's really, really fascinating to see that, especially with Black Bolt, where Black Bolt has probably the most amount of uh, propaganda, even as king, you know, being, uh, you would think as king that he wouldn't, but no, being king being raised to, to take this role, he's definitely probably knows the least about Earth. Or, you know, everything that he knows about Earth is probably not true. And uh, then we probably have, like, Crystal, who knows a lot about Earth as well. Her house, it, she called her house her apartment. <laughs> and it is very, very Earth-inspired in its look and everything. Whereas everybody else's, well, I guess we've only seen Black Bolts, which also seems to be sounding like a prison or something. Like, I don't know. Black Bolts has, like, no roof to it. They said it was his room, but... I don't know. Also, in the flashback with his parents and everything, that was a kind of Earth-inspired room, but it was also not exactly Earth-inspired. Uh, Crystal's is definitely the most Earth-inspired room. Like, it is just a straight-up, like, super rich apartment. Uh, and, yeah, so I would say that um, Karnak, we, we have no idea. He's been in the woods the whole time, so we don't know what he knows about humans or not. Gorgon doesn't seem to know much at all. So, yeah, I really like that aspect. Uh, I guess that's all I have to say. I think we've covered pretty much everything in this episode. I, I, honestly, I think the thing I'm most excited about next episode is the Hawaiian dudes and Gorgon's fight. I think that's the thing I'm most looking forward to because I really appreciate that we finally have characters who are accepting of weird shit going on, and especially of the Inhumans who are just basically humans. Like, it is much different than having to come to terms with, like, an alien or something. It is... They're basically humans. There's, there's so little difference. I mean, these guys are kind of aliens because they're from the moon and everything. But still, it's all it's all there. Uh, and, and Hawaiians are probably like... Yeah, the, the Hawaiians and Australians would probably be the two I would assume most accepting of uh, Inhumans or stuff like that. You know, I feel like every time I see a Good Samaritan clip uh, of, of like, you know, a news station or some journalist uh, like interviewing a Good Samaritan... If 90% of the time, it is always a, oh, I was just, you know, they're pretending to be humble when they actually are not at all. Whereas, anytime I see that coming out of Australia or coming out of Hawaii, it is always like, I don't know, man, I was just trying to go get a fucking beer, saw some dude doing some shit, and I stopped them. <laughs> like, it's so casual, it's so, like, just, I just did it, and I'm not even saying, like, a, oh, anybody would do it. I'm just like, eh, I just did it. <laughs> And, yeah, I feel like uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see this setting. Uh, in, in I, I've said that so much, but I am. And, and getting to see these these places that I give me such nostalgia from a, uh, like, from, from Lost, like the river, uh, or uh, ma mainly just that. Like, I haven't seen really anything else uh, from it, but that, that, that river especially, so, so much nostalgia in it. And I really appreciate now that I'm having another series that I can, uh, like, come back to a lot just to revisit how beautiful Hawaii is. Because I, I went to Hawaii on a vacation with my extremely rich grandmother at one point, uh, and it was the best vacation I've ever been on, <laughs> absolutely. As much as I hate that family, great vacation. I would absolutely love to, to live there if it wasn't so unbelievably expensive. <laughs> I'll see you guys for the next one. Till then, get the fuck out of here.